Episode 21 of season two of the Daily Intermission Podcast. And this episode, Nate, is brought to you by Manscaped. Do you ever nick yourself while trimming your lawn? Yeah, I used to. Not until you got the lawnmower full 4.0 by, land, by Manscaped? That is correct. Yeah, so if you use if you go on to manscaped.com and use the code TDI, that's code TDI, you'll get 20% off and free shipping for the lawnmower 4.0. This thing's amazing. You know, make sure you're grooming, make sure you're keeping your uh, your bushes trimmed and and it's an amazing product, Nate. It is. It's great. It's it's awesome because it's literally cut free. Like you don't you we're not going to cut yourself. It's awesome stuff. Go use our code. Support the boys. Get over there and get some Manscaped stuff. Best stuff going. Yeah, you know, update some of your uh, some of your grooming products. You know, it's not just the uh, the women that need uh, the need to um, <laughs> keep to, it clean. To groom. Yeah. Keep it groomed. I, mean, I can guarantee there's somebody listening right now, being like, "I don't need it," and I yeah. bet you they've got some greasy, rusty old thing. Yeah, for and sure. And they're in dire need of an upgrade. And yeah, I'm telling you, there's no better deal right now than Manscaped. No, absolutely. So, uh, so yeah, we'll kick things off in the pregame show. Yeah. I'm joined, as always, by Nate. Nate, how's your day going? How's the week going, my man? It's going pretty good, man. I just had a fresh shave with my Manscaped uh, okay. <laughs> lawnmower 4.0. Okay. Uh, so if you missed it back there in the ad read, uh, use code TDI and get free shipping and 20% off. So go use the damn code. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I'm doing pretty good. Good, man. Doing pretty good. Um, Minus the snow. Yeah, man. for sure. Um, I, I just, uh, I, I was in complete sh- shock this morning. Uh, oh. I'm going to be completely honest. <laughs> this is good. Um, I smashed the entire back window of my car. It looked like a, a shotgun bullet went through it. Um, yeah, Greg sent me the picture of it. I thought uh, initially, you know, I thought there might have been a gunshot through the back. I, I'm still <laughs> a little bit in shock. Like, I, I stood at, at the back of the car after I shut the trunk. So it's a hatchback kind of for some transparency here. So I was uh, I was kind of getting a luggage case. Nate and I are going on the road to Calgary. We'll get into that here in a minute. But... Uh, a case for you know carrying around the electronics. It's just an option. Uh, my old man gave it to me, so I put it in the trunk and slammed the, the trunk shut. But the case wasn't in far enough, and it kind of hit the window, and the entire window shattered. And I was like, um, "Excuse me." Yeah, I mean, I get the picture, and I'm immediately thinking worst case scenario here. Oh, it was. I'm thinking somebody bashed it in and stole all our stuff. Yeah, the cameras, and you know. But. Anyway, I mean, it's I, still not great. No, it's not. It's not. It's not. Anyway, the the window class is honestly like a stone's throw away from the parking lot I was in. So I'm I'm driving down one of the main roads in our town, and I'm just got have no back window. Glass just um, pouring out yeah, on the road. Yeah, like I'm doing shoulder checks and like winking to the cars behind me. <laughs> and anyway, yeah, it was an absolute gong show of a morning. I'll post that photo on Instagram. Uh, but Nate, we're a few days away from flying into Calgary, Alberta, for the Battle of Alberta, yep. uh, Washington, Calgary. We're gonna do some batting cages stuff. We're gonna go to the top golf that they've got there it's gonna be a fun trip man and you know it's it's about time we get out of this town oh my goodness you're right i haven't flown since 2019 so i'm uh i'm looking forward to my ears being an absolute mess for the first three hours after i land which is an absolute nightmare but i've yeah, got my neck good. pillow all ready to rock neck pillow okay i'm not i'm not a big neck pillow guy no um but uh yeah neck usually stays pretty standard i if i had some solid earplugs that just prevented me from Anyway, I'm a nightmare to fly with. I yeah. am just a, I a what's your, what's your game plan? Like, what do you? What's your game plan? Oh, so it's anxiety, but I mean, like I when I'm know. on a long flight, I mean, and and they don't have like sometimes they have uh, like I've flown to to Mexico and to Dominican. There was there was movies on the flights. So that's always mm-hmm. nice when yeah. there's a, when you see the TV in the back of the seat. Yeah, but it's not always the case. No, sometimes it's just like the pamphlets and and I you're know. like ah like oh well, I'll see how many times I can read over this emergency procedure to calm me down here. Yeah, um, it's always a classic to it. The big in the flight. Every Everyone's doing kind of the the sign language oh. of like putting the mask on. It's like we're not using these things. So put this. Let's just get this thing going. One time I had a yeah seriously. <laughs> one time I had a long delay uh, like before we took off and I fell asleep and then I woke up and I had like my earphones in so I couldn't hear anything and I just looked and it was like the the flight attendant doing the drill and I was like oh like, we're going down right now. <laughs> Absolutely panicking. Anyway, we hadn't even taken off yet and for sure. So it wasn't so bad. But I'm gonna save some podcasts. Some of my favorite podcasts for the week. So I'm, I'm all juiced up and yeah. uh, my. I don't know if I'll get the Netflix going on my phone, um, but I'll yeah. get some things going. I'll, I'll find something to. Yeah. Yeah. Man, I'm a guy now that's, I'm a full blown podcast junkie. Like I, I can't listen to music anymore because I binge my music usually on the golf course 
and at the gym. And then when I'm like just driving around, like I just, I would much rather just be listening to podcasts. It's so weird, man. It's just such a, a revelation in my life. I just, I, I, I don't oftentimes jam to music when I'm driving anymore. I used to crush podcasts a lot until like a, about a year ago. Okay. And now I don't really listen to any. Okay. Which is kind of crazy. Yeah, for sure. Uh, but I used to be a huge junkie. Used to listen to a ton. Yeah. yeah. But I just kind of stopped. I don't know. Yeah, that's odd. Yeah, it is. Just especially completely out of nowhere. Yeah. Yeah. Um, know, especially considering we're recording one currently. Yeah, no, exactly. And and it's it's a good source for, for sports news and just kind of insights like that. Um, but uh, but the MLB came out neat. Um, Rob Manfred, kind of a clown, getting a lot of lo- uh, backlash from the MLB players, from yeah. the MLB fans. Um, they had this strict deadline of, of, so opening day was supposed to be March 31st. They said they weren't going to get the deal done uh, this week. Then they, they would start to cancel games and, and they couldn't get the deal done. It was a unanimous decision by the players union yep. uh, to decline the deal. And, and they won't be playing baseball anytime soon, which is a shame, man. Yeah. Um, nice. You know, it's crazy too. This is like the 10th work stoppage. I believe the MLB has had uh, when I was looking that up, which is absolutely asinine. That is so many, man. Yeah. I mean, I'm not like full blown lockouts, but I mean, for the most part, what was 94, 95 was, I don't think it was a full season. Was it? No, I don't think, I think the last no, they time they played they a half year was 90, 90. Yeah. 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 Okay. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I mean, it just sucks, you know, with, with everything going on, obviously, you know, they're, they're, it's all over money and it's all over salaries yeah. and, and uh, you know, we'll see what happens. I mean, I, I could foresee a hundred game season. That's kind of where I'm looking right now. I mean, I think yeah. once games start to be missed, then they're like, they'll, they'll get it done. But yeah. The I mean, 100 I game seasons, I mean, I'm fine with it. I love it. Yeah, it's, I love it's it. a little better. I mean, 162 is just absolutely wild, man. Oh, yeah. We, uh, you know, we, we dive into it all the time, especially come baseball season, about how outrageous the 162 game yeah. season is. But, but yeah, I mean, Rob Manford, obviously, yeah, he was out in the hallway, and he, I was watching some of the footage from the meetings, and he's, like, pretending to swing a golf club. Like, he's just... There was just zero fucks just given from this guy. Yeah, it doesn't care. Eh? Um, but yeah. Uh, anyway, yeah, we'll see what happens. Um, you know, it just kind of comes back to the fact, like, like how much of a win did the owners in the NHL have with the salary cap? Like, what a win that is for the owners and and, oh, and, massively, and the NHL. Man. Like, well, think of like, yeah, insane. I mean, think of the the numbers some of these guys would be getting if it wasn't for like this hard cap. It's a hard cap. Too. It's the hardest of caps. It's insane, man. For and yeah, 80, for owners. what is it, eighty-two million for the NHL? Yeah, ridiculous, yeah. man. Especially when you look at markets like Toronto. Like, how much do they bring in in a year? Yeah, their payroll could be like two hundred million. Hundred percent. Yeah, that's like what Detroit used to have back in the yeah, uh, yeah. like two thousand two. That team that was yeah. like Shanahan, Hall, Iserman, Iserman, yeah. uh, Lindros, Lid- Chelios, Lidstrom. Yeah, Lidstrom. Sorry, yeah. who did I say? Lindros. Lindros. Yeah, yeah. Was, I was going to say was he Lindros. there? I mean, it no, wouldn't no. be surprised me. It yeah. seems actually juiced. Hasek. Hatcher. Yeah. Yeah. McCarty. It was yeah. absolutely outrageous. Chris Draper. Yeah, like these guys were getting. <laughs> these guys were getting. Yeah. Bad. I think Luke Robitaille was there. Yeah, yeah he was. <laughs> like holy, holy sheep smokes. testicles. That team was joust. Yeah, it was. Uh, no but kid, uh, they won the cup. Who would have thought? Staying in the pregame show here. Uh, actually, I should mention. Yeah, like the Pittsburgh Pirates have a. Thirty million dollar yeah uh, payroll. Well, it's team. like Oakland is what sixty. Yeah, they're and, not. And then high. you got you got players, single players, and other teams making more than that. Yeah, it's foolish. It's insane. So and the Rays done a good job. Like their their cap is obviously pretty low. Yep. I can't remember exactly what it is, but yeah, they've had a good run. Man, um, it's, it's just it's just wild how it works. That's hard to Some straight up money ball shit. Yeah. Um, but kind of just finish off the pregame show here, Nate. Tom Brady, a lot of speculation around uh, Tom Brady. And just people aren't buying that he's retired. I find it really hard to believe. Bruce Arians came out this week and said that uh, he wouldn't trade Tom Brady uh, unless it was for like five first round picks. So I'm not sure. That, like a lot of people are speculating that there's some beef between Bruce Arians and Tom Brady that, you know, their relationship is really, you know, spiraled out of control. And it makes a lot of sense to me. You know, for all of the, the theorists of the Tom Brady to the 49ers, he obviously grew up in California. Yeah. The 49ers are an amazing team who are in need of a quarterback. Jimmy, if, if they don't have Jimmy Garoppolo, you think that they're they're right there for a Super Bowl. So. Yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure. I mean, can I mean they imagine? almost had the Rams. Like, I know. And then they end up winning. So it's, a, I don't know. I think he's, I think he might be finished off. I hope he is. It's a lot of speculation. I hope he is. Uh, I hope he does it. But I mean, you know, he wouldn't be the first mega star to say, <laughs> "I'm back." <laughs> I'm Favre, back. How are you? Anyway, it's season two, episode twenty-one of the Daily Mission Podcast. We're going into quarter one. NBA talk, Nate. This John Morant fella, point guard in the Memphis. 
has been absolutely electric this last week. This dude is a straight up fire wagon. Man, the highlights he's dropping. I mean, he absolutely posterized Jakob Potl mm -hmm. on the San Antonio Spurs. And then at the end of that game, our Australian beauty, Stephen Adams, absolutely goes Peyton Manning. John Morant yeah. goes upstairs. Randy was, Moss is everyone. Was that the end of the game? I thought it was the end of the second. End of the half. Yeah, end of the yes, half. End of the half. Say, if that was the end of the game, for the, yeah. imagine that for the win. That's all time. For sure. I mean, they're it's stale. Oh, yeah. It's not like I'm taken away from it's it. It's a there, buzzer uh, beater. Um, but anyway, yeah, he goes upstairs. Randy Moss is everyone. Grabs it. And before Disgusting. he hits the ground, hits the shot. If you haven't seen that highly, you got to go check it out. But John Moran in, in the Grizzlies, the Grizzlies, they've got the second most wins in the NBA this season. This is a team that we looked at and he just made the playoffs like twice in the last decade. Yeah, yeah. Uh, maybe even more than that. And and uh, and this guy's, I mean, they're like 12 and 2 without John in the lineup. Like, yeah. you know, this Jaron Jackson Jr. fellow, I mean, Dylan Brooks, Canadian guy. I mean, their team's just fantastic. You know, they're playing fin they're playing great ball. And, and, uh, and the Memphis Grizzlies, I don't think they're a threat. But they've been playing great basketball, man. They're a team that has made a ton of strides in John Moran. For sure. And you also look back at some of those wins we were talking about on a podcast a, a while back. But remember, they what did they win by this year? It was like 70 or something stupid. That's right, yeah. Yeah, and they've done that. And that they did that like a couple years ago as well. So I don't know, man. This guy's absolutely electric, though, dude. He does it all, too. Just yeah. draining threes, driving the hoop. Like I, he's it, like I love watching him. I love a guy like that. Yeah, no, John Morant's been fantastic. Yeah, and it'll be interesting to see what the Memphis, the Grizzlies can do in the West. But uh, but I think you know he he's a guy that could be an MVP candidate for sure uh, for years to come. And and uh, remember him? Uh, I, I forget Murray what State. Yeah, Murray yeah. State. That's yeah. right. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, yeah, he was sick. Yeah, because they upset. I remember. I think it was 2019. I want to say. Yeah. But this is back. hard to. I have a hard time remembering the uh, well the, the brackets because so much. But they upset oh. Marquette, right? I think they came in as a 12 seed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And upset him, and he was obviously just he absolutely was such a buzzing. beast yeah you, you you could tell there that he was just a superstar yeah. in the making yeah what was he second overall too i think he went yep 2019 so yeah. yeah i mean he's come in and he's been like he's he's people are getting on board right now oh yeah and, and how uh, could you not it's been no. amazing but uh but Nate, staying in the nba ben simmons has announced that he's got some back soreness from you know ramping up activity <laughs> On the MLB, on the MLB core or on the NBA core, and they're they're heading into Philly, uh, I think next week, and uh, he won't return until after that game. Do you think that this injury? Are you buying this injury, or are you thinking that he just can't handle no, the abuse that he would no, take in Philly, and he's waiting for he's, this? He's 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 milking it. I think so too. Dude, this guy's softer than melted table butter, dude. Yeah, he not is. to completely rip the guy to shreds, but this is this the same crap we saw before. He's not playing because the you know his coach said he wasn't a top player or whatever the hell he said. What did he say again? It was yeah. Doc Rivers came out and said, yeah. uh, "Is he a team that could take you to the championship?" Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, is he a player? Yeah, it's just and now he doesn't want to face it. So I don't know if they play. It's probably on, well, they're in the same division. I'm not sure. I wonder if they have another game. I'd have to look at the schedule there, but I wouldn't be surprised if he does the old. Uh, Rest management for the yep. next one if they yep. do play it there again. That's so right. Load, we'll load, Man load management. <laughs> yeah, load management. <laughs> load you play management. eighty-two games. Like settle it down. Yeah, um, it's been interesting. I mean, James Harden's been incredible on the flip side of things. I mean, he's come out in those first three games in Philly and looked just tremendous. Yeah, him and and Joel Embiid. That's going to be a deadly duo moving forward. I would love to see a playoff matchup between those two. Yeah, for that sure. Would be great stuff. Uh, and I mean, that's what I mean. Like, if you're Ben Simmons, like you play in the division, you're going to potentially have yeah. to go there in the playoffs probably going to be a little bit worse in the playoffs i mean you got you got tristan thompson he's i mean guys get heckled in the nba that's just a part of the gig man yeah. and if you can't uh you know if you can't handle it then you go to the referee and kick him out like lebron that's that's, that's what you do man that's how it's done yeah it's so uh, i don't i can't figure this guy out man i honestly it's so bizarre i enjoyed him like before his playoff run last year mm -hmm. i enjoyed the guy i mean i thought he's just such a tremendous talent he's just such a big point guard can uh, yeah, anyway, and, and then all of a sudden the playoffs came around and we haven't seen them since. Yeah, um, that's right. Nate Chandler Parsons came out this uh, this week and was talking on a podcast with, uh, gosh, I forget the room. It's like Draymond and like yeah, Brandon Marshall, like, former receiver. Uh, under the Basket or something like that. Is okay. that right? Or Attack I'm not sure. the Basket on yeah, yeah. some podcast like that. Yeah, but uh, but Chandler Parsons came out and he said he was talking about Colby Bryant. And, and I guess Chandler Parsons was in his first few years in the league. And, and Colby came up to him in warm-ups and said, listen, man, if you guys are going out on the town later on, I got you. Here's, you know, I'll get you, I'll get, you know, I'll get you my guys to hook you up with my number. And, and Chandler yeah. Parsons, 
was like, just there's just no chance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, like there's no shot. Anyway, yeah. apparently gets a text after the game. He's like, I got you all hooked up at the ballroom. And I, I don't know if it's called the ballroom, but they ended up going to the ballroom. They and, said it was like signed Mamba on the text. Yeah, just yeah, like yeah. Wrote Mamba. That's, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> Anyway, so he shows up at this at this club, and the whole team. He's telling his whole team, like he's the second year, and he's like, "I got us hooked up at at uh, at the ballroom," and they're all like, "Okay, yeah, yeah." He, so he's got to be thinking in the back of his head too, be like, "Come on, by God, I hope I'm hooked up." <laughs> Come on, yeah. yeah. So I guess they go out, have a great time. The coaches are there, all the all the staff, you know, all the players, and and uh, this this woman comes up to him at the end of the night, twenty five grand, yeah, Bill. And he's, I guess, sweat. And he's yeah. like, you know, he doesn't see a paycheck. His his dad's, you know, looking after his finances. Hopefully, it's not the Eric John or the Jack Johnson situation. But yeah, uh, oh, yeah. yeah but uh, no, anyway. So anyway, he she comes up and he's sweating. He's like, yeah, you just need to sign for Kobe. Yeah, and he writes good, yeah. Kobe Bryant, and Kobe took care of it. And I thought, what a story. Yeah, man, the stories keep pouring out about the guy too. And it's just like he's an absolute legend. It's. He's just an awesome guy, man. It's oh. a shame. Man. And the work he put into, like oh uh, he would show up at the arena like three in the afternoon and yep. and then he would be there after the game. And uh I never really understood that the the whole post game workout. Mm-hmm. Um like I was I didn't obviously play the highest tier of sports, but I'm at the end of a game, I'm usually pretty wrecked. Like I'm usually, you know, banged up and, and I'm like I'm like let's let's like hit a hit a shower hit the showers <laughs> yeah, and that's uh, think you're pulling a this or that, uh Big Mac or Yeah, that's or, right. Yeah. But, but uh but no, like a lot of the guys, you know, t- in today's age, they'll hit the bike, they'll hit they'll hit the weights. Yeah. You know, I've heard stories about Zeno Charney. Like he gets right onto the old squat rack after a game. Is it's that like, right? Yeah, yeah. Like wow. he'll start pumping weight. Holy smokes. Um, That's lunatic vibes. Yeah. And I mean Kobe Bryant though basically invented the term built different. Yes, for so. sure. And it's just the work that you've got to put in. Like these guys have to try to find an edge. Yes. And it's it's not the the it's not the good players or the very good players. These are the the superstars of the league. These are the yeah. top five, top ten guys looking for that extra edge, putting in the work that people don't see. And Colby Bryant is is he's he spearheaded that and, and he's a guy now, yeah, like you said, Nate, you hear stories come out all the time, not about how much of a genuine dude he was, but how hard he worked. Exactly. Um Nate staying in the NBA coach pop. Greg Popovich is going to be the most winningest coach in the history of the NBA. He's won five NBA titles, 1999, 2003, 2005, 2006, and 2014. I mean, you can see he's getting up there in age. He, yeah. he, I get a lot of Bill Belichick vibes from him. Just such a great coach. Dialed in. He brings the attitude sometimes in the media. But congrats to Greg Popovich, man. Do we, do we say he's the coaching goat in the NBA? I would do we I go would, with that. I would go there, Nate. I, but... <laughs> I'm going to be, I'm ignorant to the 70s, 80s, 90s. You know, I would think that, um, uh, gosh, who's who's the Bulls coach? Phil, um, um, gosh, he, he, uh, he won all the championships yeah, with the yeah, Bulls. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You'd have to think he was there. Yeah, um, for sure. But uh, but I would think Greg Popovich, man. He, I mean, he, he's. I mean, nothing but great things are said about him in the NBA, and I mean, he's going to have the most wins in the history of the league. So you'd have to think. Yeah, he's got to be up there. It yeah. would be interesting to see too, and I know we're going to touch on uh, Coach K here in a minute, but um, it'd be interesting to see like what a guy like that would have done in the NBA. But you know, he's just like you know, he you always had to figure he was never going to come just because he's so financially. Set. stable with duke it's like yeah. why would i go try to prove myself start on a contract that's like a little lower because i mean like financially wise i think uh, popovich makes like 11 mil okay and then um coach k is like nine seven i believe in the ncaa for duke which is just <clears throat> this is a it's a ridiculous it's a number it's a ridiculous <laughs> number especially for, sure. for athletes that can't make money yeah except for now they can a little bit off you know I wonder if he gets paid when he goes and coaches the olympic team coach k I don't know. Interesting. It's a good question, but uh, but yeah, you're right. I mean, it's uh, it's kind of like the Nick Saban situation in Alabama. I mean, you'd think that yeah. they'd have a secure job, uh, you know, in the in the higher up pro leagues, but they just they're content with their paychecks. One hundred percent. Why wouldn't you be really? I mean, like Duke's yeah. a, obviously a world class basketball program. So. I think too. Like I don't know. You can correct me if I'm wrong here, Nate, but I would think that you've got more authority, more control over yeah. kids that age. Yeah, you I would. feel as if. You know, once you get into the pros, the guys, it's not really the same relationship. It's a yeah. Bit of a different way of. For sure, for sure. And the other thing, too, is like, um, I mean, you know, you're going to be. Sorry, I've completely forgot what I was saying there. Okay, it's okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, the, just the coaching. I mean, once you get the mature guys who have made it to the pros, it just feels as if they become more of a, a man and you've yeah. got to treat them a bit differently. Maybe your philosophy. Okay, I got it now. Yeah. I don't know how I'd possibly blank that bad, but. Um, 
Uh, I was going to say, okay, hold on here. We're going to have to stop for a sec. I've just forgot again. Okay, that's okay. <laughs> no, we'll just move on. To, okay. Yeah. No, it was, uh, okay. It is, you're, like, there's a higher chance you get fired. You know what I mean? Yes, like, if he comes into the exactly, league, they, yeah. like, Coach, I don't know how I just forgot that possibly twice, <laughs> which is just, like, as if I was coming up with some breaking I news. I thought we were having a just, panic attack. Dude, I kind of was starting to, after starting to think about what I was, how I was forgetting. But anyway, yeah, it's just, like, there'd be a higher chance you get fired where he knows he's just, like, no one's firing me from Duke. Yeah. Like, I'm not going anywhere. Yeah, unless they went on, like, a, a just an absolute, yeah. like, four-year, five-year. But, they but did, that's not going to happen because, no, you know, the, the, the recruiting process. Recruits. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And then if you go coach Jacksonville or something, it's like, well. Phil Jackson. Yeah. Phil Jackson was the Bulls coach. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. There we go. Thanks All right. Well, there we Jackson. Yeah. yeah. There we have uh, it. <laughs> all right. Nate, just to finish off the NBA quarter one, uh, Nick Stauskas, uh, Canadian boy. He was uh, drafted 2014 eighth overall, I do believe, to the Sacramento Kings. Dropped mm-hmm. 57 in the G League the other day. I mean, that's all the big, man up. That's a big number. Yeah. Get him a job in the NBA. He was uh, on TSN for a while doing some NBA a- a- analytics for uh, for TSN. But this guy, man, I mean, if you're dropping 57 in the G League, you got to get a shot. <laughs> oh, my goodness. You have to. No, it's like straight up Jimmer Verdette vibes. Yeah. <laughs> like, just get the guy over there i mean yeah, that guy's dropping shanghai. 80 and yeah he's dropping 80 in china like for can we shanghai give him another Dragons? shot like yeah get jimmer in there but, but who knows how it translates league. right like yeah for sure it's one of those um but that'll conclude quarter one season two episode 21 the daily mission eight quarter two we're moving to the nhl yeah call the race the call the race is heating up a little bit man it's kind of been getting talked about as we wind down here in the regular season uh you got the two kids out of detroit lucas raymond yep. and uh, mo cider and then you've got michael bunting yeah michael kind bunting of, coming in i mean zegris is there but he feels like he's yeah. a little behind every, i think so i, I don't yeah. know why but he's fallen a little bit i think he'd be getting a lot more media coverage just from some of the stuff he's pulled off this year because he's not far off on points wise but yeah bunting's got to be taking a got to be taking a stride plus 1000 I mean, odds right now Nate. yeah i mean I don't know if I'm going to touch it. I feel like I feel like Moe's going to get it. What happens if his goal total starts with the three? Bunting. Yeah, I mean, that could change things. I mean, I feel like Raymond's going to get close, too, is the thing, right? So it's, I don't know. But the, you know what the worst bit is? If if Bunting does end up being there, he may lose some votes just for the sole fact. I believe he's his 26 age. years old. He is, yep. Um, yep. So, I mean, that's always a polarizing topic. For come, sure. I mean, when you had Artemi Panarin come over, I and believe Capri's he was 27. Him, right? Yeah, Kaprizov yeah. was a little, like, he was 23, yep. I think, 24, yep. which is still, like, you know, up there a little bit. But, I mean, for, sure. for the most part. I'm still, I, I gave it at the beginning of the year. I, I think I'm still going to rock with Zegers. But but this most yeah. Sider guy, I think I think defenseman in the NHL, especially rookie defenseman, the way he's playing, minutes he's logging. Yeah. Like, I think that he's going to get a lot of attention come come rookie voting time. Yeah. I really like his game. I mean, what what a pick he's turned out to be. For the Detroit sure. Red Wings have a bright future, man. Oh, man. It, um, I, th- I believe. I brought this up a few episodes ago, but yeah, Mo Sider was like off the board yep. when they took him six. So yeah. it's like it's it's and it's panned out so quick too, man. Like he's just come in. Like it's hard to usually a defenseman coming into the league, you're not going to be that you know of a standout right he's away. He's a big dude. He's too. huge and he just moves the puck well. He's he, like he's one of those guys. He's young and you look at him and you you trust him. Yeah, you know, like you sometimes you have these defensemen that come in and you're like, okay, I don't really trust this guy with the puck kind of idea, but he's like, he's built of confidence. He's so. kind of in that. He's he's going to be in that Norris talk for 100%. for a decade. You yeah. know, with Kale McCarr, like yes. he's going to be right Adam there. Adam Fox, Adam Fox, yeah, exactly. Man, like I was watching a Fox the other night. Man, he's in, he's. He's good. He's very good. He's got good. some outrageous vision. Um, Nate, Patrick Liney, we talked about him last week. He was, I think he was your fire wagon two weeks ago. Yes. Uh, but he what a tremendous goal he scored last night. Toe drag. He brought it in so close to his body. I don't know if I would have stayed on my feet. Yeah. Goes around the guy. Absolutely snipes for our side. He's got nine goals in his last 10 games. Three being game winners in February. Yeah, it's outrageous. I got, I'll probably give him fire wagon of the month. Yeah, you have um, to, man. You know what's funny about when you pull those deeks at the blue line and then you're like going in past the guy? Does it not seem like there's like a nine out of 10 chance you just score? Yeah. Like how it, many times do you see a guy just dance a dude and then just like miss the net? Like Not often. Or just get saved. Yeah, it just like generally goes in the net. As soon as there's like a mega highlight pulled out, they yeah. do. You're right. They it's finish weird. it more often than not. And it's and but, you, you know, but you know when you were playing, did you ever you get black that? Out. I almost black out when I pull off something crazy. I'm like, whoa, I just did that. But and you then feel it's like, so confident well, exactly. going in after you're like, down. oh, I'm burying You're this. in the zone. Yeah. yeah. Um, no, exactly. Uh, but Patrick Lani, yeah, he's had, I mean, this guy, this guy can put up 40 with ease. Like this guy's talent is off the charts. Yeah, man. He's such a good player and he just, he hasn't found that consistency and, and I don't know if it's the Fortnite he's playing or there's just a ton of rumors of why he hasn't brought <laughs> yeah. it night in, night out. But yeah. I mean, if Columbus can find his consistency, 
I mean, well, this knows? is a guy who was like, he was kind of in the running for first overall the year with Matthews. Like yep. they had an absolutely outrageous world of juniors. Like they won the thing. Yep. They were all draft eligible. Him, pull Yarby. Uh, and Aho. Yeah. Aho, Rantanen, Hints. Yeah. I can't remember who the other draft eligible. It was pull Yarby and line. A, I think were the only two, but still that team was outrageous. But yeah, I mean, the guy's an absolute stick and like his favorite player growing up was Ovechkin and you can see it. He's basically like a prototype of the guy. Yeah. Just rips pox. Yeah, he's got an incredible shot. It's unbelievable. So. Um, but even yeah, his dangles in the neutral zone, like on the rush, insane. He's yes. he's such a great player, but so but slick. he lacks consistency. But we'll give we'll give Patrick Line the credit that he deserves right now because he's lighting it up in Columbus right now. For sure. And they're hanging on by for dear life. Gotta for, feel like he's probably directly out of there after this year. Yep. Yeah, I would think we'll so. See. It depends. Depends on I guess they uh, give him the, they give him the blank check, then he might stick around. For but. sure. I need, I had to give a shout out to my guy, Jeremy Swayman. I mean, a lot of people uh, speculating around the Boston Bruins that they've got the goaltending to go on a real run. And, um, you know, a lot of people saying maybe Allmark was paid uh, a little too much uh, for what he's been able to do. But I like this Jeremy Swayman cat, man. He was a runner-up for the Holby Baker a few years back. Mm-hmm. This Alaska, Alaska native guy. I mean, he's he's the rookie of the month in NHL 5-1-1. I didn't know uh, he was from Alaska. Yeah, 1.13 goals against average, 960 save percentage. This guy's going to be a great goaltender for the Boston Bruins moving forward. It sucks because we're kind of moving out of the Bergeron Marchand era right. in Boston. But uh, but I think that this guy, I think this is the cat that can take them on a little run if they can. I mean, I know Don Sweeney. I know he's going to be active at the deadline. He always yeah. is. Yes, for sure. Um, so he's going to be. He's going to, and he knows. He, <sighs> he you don't get to tell him that he his window's closing. Quickly. No, no, no. Um, um, that's no doubt. I mean, he would have probably said the same thing like three or four years ago. So he's yep. going to be all over it. But, uh, you know, it, I was just thinking of a scenario. It would be so wild if they end up winning and, you know, Swayman takes them. Like, Rask. Oh. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> the guy would just get, you know, it, oh. it would just be double, double down. Yeah, for guy. sure. His, I mean, I loved Tuca for a long time. But, yeah, he obviously, you know, he had, we had two opportunities to get it done and he couldn't get it done. Um, Do you think he was, ca- like, you thought he's capable. Oh my goodness, man, he was tremendous. Yeah. You don't go to two cup finals with mm. you know with not not having strong strong goaltending. For he's, sure, he's incredible, man. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, it doesn't matter who you are in the Boston sports markets. Um, you know, if you're a quarterback, if you're a pitcher, if you're a goaltender, you know those highlight positions, you're going to get a lot of scrutiny. You're going to get a lot of backlash 100%. in the media. You know, the spotlight's going to be on you, and and that's just the reality of being in the big sports markets. And yeah, like you said, Nate took took a lot of heat. Um, Nate, I did want to touch quickly. I don't want to get too much too far into this because mm-hmm. you know it's not something that we'd like to talk about here on the podcast from too too much. But yeah, but uh, CCM announced this week that uh, they'll be dropping all uh, all advertisements uh, with Alexander Ovechkin tied into it. It's unfortunate. A lot of the Russian players obviously probably don't align with everything going on no. um, in Jeez, Russia no. and Ukraine. But but yeah, they're feeling it, man. And and uh, and it's 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 tough to see. Obviously, you feel for for Ovi and and uh, all the Russians that are. Uh, that are taking heat and and um, getting death threats. Yeah, for yeah. sure. So I mean, yeah, I, I exactly like we don't know how everything aligns and whatever CCM is going to do. I know a lot, there's a lot of backlash on CCM about the whole thing. I think a big thing is like Ovechkin still has his profile picture with Putin, but at the other time, uh, the other thing is too like he man, he's such a high profile guy in Russia that like he can't speak out against this. You know what I mean? Like he could be no. like some serious repercussions could occur in that circumstance. Like I feel like even if he changed his profile picture on Instagram. Yeah, theoretically, like something could happen. I don't know. Like, I, I don't know what's going. Seems on. Seems like so. a very unpredictable guy. And exactly. Yeah, we're not. Well, gonna, no kidding. Yeah, we're not going to you know, speculate on it too much. But no. I saw Nikita Zadorov came out. He's the first Russian to post to a story and say no war and yeah and things of that nature. But anyway, we're not going to get too much into it. Nate. Mark Shifley. This is all, it was almost dog water esque for me the week. I might preview that. But he came on the media said this week and he was asked if he was going to answer the bell. They played the Montreal Canadiens for the first time since the playoffs and he said he was if he was going to answer the bell for the Jake Evans hit. Obviously, yeah. we all remember uh, him absolutely charged and the wheels off of him and yeah. pasting him um, into the boards. I do believe Jake Evans was stretchered off. Um, anyway. Was he? I think so, Jesus. man. I did. I think he did give the thumbs up. But, um, <laughs> but uh, um, <laughs> holy smokes. But anyway, Mark Shifley goes to the media and Jake Evans isn't a big guy. He's obviously not known for fighting. He says, yeah, if Jake Evans wants to fight, I'll fight him. Do you think that's the way players should approach to answering the bell? Because I'm pretty sure it's like, Listen, man, if you're going to answer the bell, you fight who asks you. Yeah, exactly. You know, like you don't just pick your Shifley's fight. Shifley's not going to fight. He did. He ended up fighting. Yeah, but he's not. But who did he fight? No, I'm saying he's not going to fight like a big, like. No, exactly. You know what I mean? Exactly. Like he's not going to. Guess who he fought? Small defenseman. I wish I would have looked. Oh, dude, not uh, Morrissey. 
No, uh, no more. She's on his team. Um, oh yeah, what am I? <laughs> who's the small defenseman? Nate? I can't think of his name. I'm unsure. All they brought him in. He runs the power plays. A sh- small righty. <sighs> small righty. Um, gosh, yeah, I, well, I can't, can't think. Of, I think he played in the KHL man. last year. KHL last year, small righty. Yeah, he's. Oh my gosh, I picture him. I hate when this happens. Oh, um, I, I Weidman. Oh my, Chris Weidman fought Chris Weidman. Okay, that's not. That's more than I thought. That uh, I think Weidman is a little scrappy. Okay. Yeah. Well. Yeah. He, he gave. Maybe it to I'm him thinking a, more Dennis. Yeah. Dennis would beat the wheels off. Yes. Uh, but yeah. Anyway, he fought Chris Weidman. It didn't very really last very long. And mm-hmm. and uh, anyway, Mike, Mark Shifley. I just didn't know how he, how he felt about him uh, in the media saying, "Yeah, I'll fight Evans if Evans wants to fight." It's like, all right, man. Yeah. I'm just, um, uh, but anyway, we get the trade deadline a couple weeks away. Uh, yeah. You know it's going to be active. There's a lot of headliners. Um, you know, head. Uh, you know, making making noise. So I think a lot of teams are going to bolster up for the playoffs. It's going to be really exciting to track. And we're going to have Pete Blackburn on for that. Yeah. Uh, so we'll talk to Pete about every everything going on in the NHL, uh, the trade deadline. And, and, uh, we're super excited about that. Yeah. It should be a good one for sure. I'm like, I love the trade deadline. Oh, it, you know, it's, it's gotten a little worse a few years coming just because everybody kind of does the trades beforehand. Yeah. The day used to be just an absolute <laughs> takeoff school. And we're watching this all day long kind of thing. But yeah. I got a feeling it could be a heater this year. I think so. Too. There's a lot of guys. Yep. There's a lot of big names out there. So hopefully uh, a few of them go, I'm excited to see what happens with like the Arizona because you know Arizona will just absolutely ship anybody for anything. Yeah. So who knows? Team like what's Philly. Go yeah, we on. talked about. It. Yeah, there's yeah. some teams out here looking to. Sell yeah, well, Philly's got to sell Montreal. Too. I mean, it was just crazy. Um, but uh, but Nate, that'll conclude quarter two. Yeah. Season two, episode twenty one of the Daily Intermission Podcast, and it is halftime show, folks. And you yes. know what the halftime show is? It is what number do they wear? So what we're gonna go back and forth wear? here and give athletes, and we've got to say or guess what number they wear. I am. Honestly, I'm going to be, you know, full disclosure here, full different, full transparency. I get a number stuck in my head sometimes oh. and I can picture it on any player. So I, I'm not I, as good as at this as, as I maybe once thought. Well, this is what, like when we were doing it, we were doing a live on TikTok the other night and you just kind of get like, someone was like Kawhi Leonard and it's like, well, it's two, but it's like, you know, you, you I pictured like I get 23 on there and Same, I'm just like, yeah. it's 23. Yeah. And you get that one number, like what we said, 27 for everyone. Anyway, let's get into it and see what happens here. It should be good. All right, now I'll start, start here. Okay. Evan Rodriguez. Oh, okay. He's number nine. Bang. One oh. for one. Okay. Dmitry Orlov. He's nine. He is? Okay. Okay. We're, we're dialed early here, folks. <laughs> Leonard Fournette. Leonard Fournette. He is not 87 because that's Travis Kelsey, correct? Yep. He's 17? Seven. Horseradish. You had, se- you had seven on the he- in the mind. Oh, man. Yeah. See, like, geez. Uh, Dylan Strom. Dylan Strom. Yeah. Oh man. Uh, I know this. Yeah. Yeah. You definitely do. It's just, it's hard, man. It's a hard game. Is it 16? <laughs> it's 17. I... <laughs> Jake Evans. Jake Evans. Oh boy. I want to say 46. Don't tell me 64. <laughs> 71, but that's a good... Is it polling? Or p- paling? paling? Yeah, he's 46, perhaps. Okay. Yeah. Well, geez. Uh Gabe Landeskog. It's... This is so bad that I can't just ream this off at the top of my head. It's 60-something, I think. Is it? Oh. Or is it 80-something? Uh, 92. Yeah. <laughs> Are you were you just screwing with me there or what? Uh, no, I was just, going through the it. I was going through the numbers in okay, my head. Okay. Like sixties, I don't think actually eighties actually yeah. I don't think th- yeah. ninety two. Uh, okay, uh, DK Metcalf. Oh geez, I know this one. Absolute juice monkey. Yep, yep. DK Metcalf. Oh. Okay, I've got three numbers in my head. I'm just gonna go with fifteen. <laughs> Fourteen. Oh my god! <laughs> Such a moron. Zach Levine. Is Zach Levine 11? He's eight. Oh, yeah. Who's 11 on the Heat? That's uh, uh, 11 on the Heat is. Um, uh, it's I, not Butler, is it? No. Uh, uh, or, I, oh, sorry, the Bulls. Yeah, no, no, Bulls. no. no. <laughs> sorry. Yeah, yeah. Holy um, Smokingtons. Uh, Jimmy Butler, Nate. Oh, my God. <laughs> Who would have thought? <laughs> yeah. uh, I think he's 11. 22. Well, uh, I meant 11 times two. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, Otto Porter Jr. Oh. Former Wizards third overall pick. Yeah. Man, I I think it's 13. He's 32. <sighs> yeah, well. 
Um, okay, Garrett Cole. Oh, jeez. 12? 45. Dude, I was thinking 44 b- <laughs> before that, and I just, I don't know why I went 12. God, I'm a moron. I would have been off by one again. Uh, we got Sadiq Bay. Oh, man. Uh, nine? Uh, 41. <laughs> I, was, I was not getting that. Yeah, no, it's tough. Uh, <sighs> What's this now? Uh, Grayson Allen. Oh, geez. I know this. He's, uh, is he two? Seven. Oh, I knew it was single digits. I don't know. I wasn't going to get seven. I now. feel as if we were way better than, on this than on the TikTok live. A hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. Um, rough and door. 42. 12. <laughs> Juan Soto. Uh, oh, shoot. Dude, I can like I have it in my head. I'm, I'm just so bad. It's not eight. Twenty-two. This is pathetic. <laughs> Boba Shet. I hate this. I don't. I don't like this game anymore. <laughs> I mean, obviously, we got flashing Mike. Oh no. Um. Okay, we're going to... Uh, I'll just guess here first. Yeah. Well, I may as well try and finish the... Okay, yeah, I'll I finish the second. Okay. Yeah. Uh, is it 13? It's 11. Lonzo... Or Lamello Ball. Two? Bang. Okay. Um, Pine Tar Chapman. 33. 54. <laughs> Jimmy Garoppolo. Jimmy Garoppolo. Uh, he's... Oh, man. I looked at him today. You can't even make this up. Is he 87, 13? <laughs> He's 10. Ow. Uh, okay, last one for you. That, was that the last one? Yeah. Uh, Ronaldinho. Nine. 10. <laughs> We're never playing this again. That, that'll that wrap that up for the... Yeah. That'll be the last time we play against the number, folks. <laughs> Holy smoke. All right, in a quarter three, episode two. 21 of season two of the Daniel Mission podcast. We're talking PGA Tour. We're going to start things off with the Honda Classic. That course last week ate the golfers alive. Never in all my years of watching golf have I seen anything as pathetic as Sung JM. <laughs> Unbelievable. You know, I was catching some, catching some flack because obviously I took him uh, this week again as one of my best bets. And uh friend of the show uh, did the kid. Said, uh, did you see his comment on the Instagram? No. Oh, he said, uh, he's like, well, one thing to do is just keep running Sung Jay, bound to hit eventually on my <laughs> picks. It's like, well, you have a fair point. Yeah. But maybe not. He might never hit. Yeah. Like, I mean, he's your guy, obviously. And, yeah. and uh, he, I mean, he had a great history at the Honda Classic. I'm going to give you over under 250 water balls last week. How many do you think? How oh. many golf balls entered the water? Over under 250. I'm going to say under. Give me 241. It was over. It was like 283 balls oh in the water Lord last week. Earth. It was insane, man. Anyway, Daniel Berger had the lead. I think he had a five-shot lead or maybe less. Four or five-shot lead going into the final day and ended up losing. Um, shot four over in the final day. Sepp Straka, the Austrian. The old 6,900 in daily fantasy comes through. <laughs> Austrian born. People don't know Sepp Straka. They might remember him from leading the first round of the Olympics at eight under. He shot eight under the first round of the Olympics uh, in the summer in Japan. But yes, yeah, Sepp Straka gets his first one on tour. I think he was a Georgia Bulldog, if I'm not mistaken. So, I mean, a lot of these guys could come right. over. Uh, what's that? I said could be right. That's one thing yeah. I definitely could not guess is uh, college. collegiate uh, golfers. Yeah. So anyway, his first win on tour. He was teammates with Keith Mitchell uh, at, uh, at college. And, and Seb Straka gets his first win on tour. Uh, but it wasn't a great field, Nate. Like you said, it, I mean, I wasn't as invested as I normally am. My daily fantasy got absolutely ranced. My one-and-done pick was came dead last. Mm-hmm. Matthew Wolf, 17 over in two days. <laughs> um, so so anyway, it was kind of I was disinterested on Sunday. Wasn't the headliner, but this week I got a feeling it's going to be an absolute heater, and it's the Arnold Palmer Invitational. Yeah, it's looking at good. Bay Hill. It's a shame Bryson's withdrawn. Yes, um, obviously that would have made for some great content. Yep. Uh, obviously last year we had him doing the the old point and go over the river. Yeah, number six. I mean that that was the highlight of of the round for sure. last year. Every round, I mean you wait, wait for him to get to six, and just seeing how far he could bomb it up that par five. Oh man, that uh, that just brought me back to what is that uh, you played? Obviously Cabot. 
Yep. It's on the cliffs course. Uh, it's one of them. It's a par four, but it's like all there is is like tee box unless you go up to the right on the hill. And then it's like completely over water. Uh, yep, yep. There's you know actually I mean? a, ve- a very similar hole too on the on the uh, on the links. It's like hole five on the links, and then it's yeah. I know what you mean. Yeah. though. Yes, yeah. that's right. Hole five. Yeah, on the, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, it, all left is complete ravine, and then you can play. Yeah. It's similar to that hole. It's yeah, yeah. exactly. And it's just like I yeah. can't get. I couldn't get over it. No, it it's like a 310 yard carry. Yeah, I was playing like, with a guy, okay, shout cool. out Jason Thibodeau and, uh, and Drake and those guys. When I was there playing, I mean, they all fucking went bombing after it. And mm-hmm. then I was just hammering a hosel shanked iron up the fairway <laughs> back yeah. in the days. It's when a I was brutal really angle struggling. coming from that top part too. Oh yeah, for sure. Oh. Um, but, uh, but no, no, it's going to be exciting, man. This tournament's awesome. I mean, the late Arnold Palmer obviously was such a great player uh, for the game, such a great ambassador for the game of golf, and, and people like coming here. Yep. Field's great. You got John Ron playing, you got Rory playing, Will Zalatoris, um, yeah. Willie Z. Yeah, bunkers are trash. Sanjay, though, I hear. Hugged Hideki. Yeah, Bryson last year came out <laughs> saying the bunkers were brutal, but uh, <laughs> but man. yeah. Rory, first round leader. Mm-hmm. He's he's had a tremendous history here. So Rory, a lot of people took him in the one and done. But who are you riding this week in your one and done? I'm on Willie Z. As am I. So Willie Zalatoris. Yep. Uh, he's the guy who came runner up, lost in the playoff to Luke List. Yep. Uh, I forget what event that was. Man, they all start to kind of cram together. But that was four weeks back, and then he was all ramped up. And his interview said he's coming out and winning. Caught the cove. Caught COVID. Yeah. So uh, so back. yeah. So he should be fantastic this week. Last time I checked, he was in second place with four under. A lot of fits, um, uh, a lot of fits. Patrick Love this week, I've heard yep. from around the betting scene as well. Yeah, for sure. So I, I like that. No, Big absolutely. Fitzy guy. Uh, Nate, I just wanted to touch on uh, next year's Ryder Cup in, yep. uh, in, I think it's in Paris, France, but uh, uh, maybe it's not. But it's in Europe. And yeah. uh, Zach Johnson, uh, longtime legend of the game, um, Masters champion, he'll be. Uh, British Open champion, I do believe, too. Uh, he'll be uh, the captain of the Ryder Cup team, so that's always a huge honor. Uh, you'd have to think Tiger in the next few years will be oh, sniffing out the captaincy. You'd think. Um, but, uh, but yes, so Zach Johnson's the captain of the upcoming Ryder Cup next year. And Tiger Woods absolutely body-bagged Phil. I don't want to get too much into it because we've been talking about Phil McSon a lot the last, the last few episodes, but Phil came out before the Hawaii, the Hawaii tournament and said that he had won the Player Impact uh, Performance Award, the PIP Award, which the PGA Tour, obviously, uh, just a brief kind of ex- uh, explanation of what this is. They're going to give $30 million to the top 10 players who demonstrate the most social buzz, the most internet buzz. And Tiger Woods didn't play in any event. Played in actually yeah. won the PNC and wins. Yeah, that's wins. absolutely crazy. And th- So what exactly do they go off um for compiling this stuff like is it just like search engine kind of thing or just like views clicks like or, or are you aware or yeah i don't know what the full rubric is nate but it's yeah, uh, yeah it's obviously google searches it's um it's social media right. um stickiness i mean i'm sure uh impressions i mean um, so phil was second if i'm not mistaken yes. so yep. i mean that i mean it all kind of makes sense i mean as soon as tiger comes back the entire golf world's a buzzsaw yeah you know, so it's no surprise he would finish first there, and the, and just the way Phil's been, you know, even just of late. Oh man, you know, so it's yeah, well, yeah, and even too, like I mean, obviously Phil winning a major yes. at fifty one, and yeah, and yeah, he did like the the fireside with Phil. Like he's yeah. a good, like, he's a fun character. He's just he's just had a bit of a struggle in the last few months. That's right. Um, but the premature celebration on Twitter saying that he won, and then Tiger kind of snuck out, quote tweeted it, and said <laughs> "oops," yeah, or "whoops" or something like that. So. Yeah. Anyway, body bagged him, but uh, but no, Nate, we'll be tracking the, um, the gosh, the Arnold Palmer Invitational closely, keeping mm-hmm. you updated. Um, we'll see. I, I'm I'm all over Willie Z, but it, I mean Rory off to a scorching start. It's always always, always scary to, to see. see. Yeah. Um, but uh, We're but Nate, Willie Z, baby. We're moving into quarter four, UFC NCAA with March Madness just around the corner. Yep. A huge UFC fight this weekend. Jorge Mazdaval versus Colby Covington. I mean, these guys, I don't know if if there's another sporting event where it's just an absolute bloodbath before the fight. I mean, they absolutely chirp the promotion side of things. Like, I don't know how much of it is is staged and how much of it is like truly hate because these two guys used to be best friends and the hate that they're pouring out online. Like, they were on uh, an interview with Stephen A. Smith yep. just chirping the wheels off each other. I mean, this is going to be an absolute bloodbath, man. Yeah, well, that's what it's all about, you know. Know, even if you're like best friends, you still gotta. Are they still best friends though? No, no, no. Yeah, okay. There's some I didn't think. Hate there. Yeah, yeah, okay. So I mean, there's a little bit there. I'm sure they're. I mean, it's always usually a little bit milk. Did we talk about last weekend too, or or was it the weekend before with the the blood? 
Yeah, yeah. Last I don't weekend think we broke that down. Yeah, uh, I, I'm not sure if we did talk about it. Yeah, but on the last card, yeah. I mean, Nate, Nate and I were on live while we're watching a fight. Uh, a, guy, a gentleman got caught open right, right on the nose or right below the eye, and the amount of blood that was leaving his body. I mean, I think in in any in any sport or anything, you're. I mean, the ambulance is coming in, and you're getting yeah. this guy to the nearest hospital. They didn't stop the fight. It was concerning. Yeah, man. it's crazy, man. That's how it goes. But like, what are they to do? Kind of the same thing, you know. You got waivers and everything signed. It's like if I, if I don't stop it, like I'll I I wouldn't be surprised. There's some guy that would just bleed out in there, man. Yeah, these guys are warriors. They're a different yeah. breed. Um, but uh, on this card as well, there's a few good fights. Greg Hardy, a former Dallas Cowboy, will be fighting. I think he's seven and four in the UFC. He's always a fun guy to have on the main card. These guys, these absolute monster heavyweights. Yeah. Um, but uh, need just some NCAA news as well. Coach K is in his final season. He played his final road game the other day. Do you think that'll give Duke a little motivation? I mean, I know they're going to be like a top. They're going to be a one seed, I think, a one or two seed in yeah. the uh, in the March Madness. Do you think that might give them a little extra bump, a little extra motivation? Not that you know, I don't love that narrative. It's like they're going to be extra motivated. But do you think Coach K have those guys buzzed and just that that would be a special story for Coach K to go win the March Madness in his last season? Yeah, I think so. I mean, I could see you know I could see them going out on top kind of thing. You know, with yeah, him for um, sure. But you know, it's hard to say too. Like I could also just see them kind of you know they haven't been like ultra competitive the last few years no like they weren't the duke that they were when i was like young so it's i don't know we'll see what happens but it would be it'd be very interesting to see i would love to see coach k go out on top so that there's nothing better you know so no for sure um yeah we'll see how how duke does i think that they could be um you know a threat i think they're always going to be a threat come but i think it feels if you know the last few years like you said Nate, they've been in kind of a you know a 32 16 sweet 16 exit mm -hmm. um i know they had a lot of hype in that zion rj barrett cam reddish year and didn't, and didn't and get it done they lost 16 then right i think so yeah, yeah. um but uh some teams that i'm looking at i think i'm going to be riding arizona I, i'm just getting this vibe from arizona they so, had a big win the other night and gonzaga is obviously right there and yeah Purdue, you said Nate's going to be your yeah. team? Well, I'm not entirely sold on it yet, but I'll have Purdue going fairly deep. Okay. But I usually try to, like, stick with, like, a, a two seed. I don't take a one seed to win usually just because, like, I don't know, for bracket purposes. I think I talked about this last time, but it's just, like, I don't know. You know, a lot of people are going to have ones. Yeah, so you've like got you kind of got to differentiate a bit. You have to if you want to win the whole exactly, thing for sure. Exactly, so. Yeah, I think I'm going to do mine blindfolded. And, okay. Um, or not blindfolded, but like somehow like randomize them and just I don't know how I'm going to do it yet, but I'm doing it. In, I'm doing it in a different manner because I've never been successful. And like mm -hmm. I said in past episodes, I stare at the number, I stare at the ranking, and it, and yeah. it gives, just gives me too much I, of a. I'm not taking. I'm not taking that team to win. Like I'm. I don't know. I usually do like I'll do a little bit of research. Like I'll probably go through like five, six different sites, um, just where everyone's kind of giving their picks. Like you know, you get like the top offense or like the yeah. top offense in the conference or the conference or whatever, and then go from there. And then, I mean, I sometimes get to a point where it's like, I'm generally taking the nine seed over like the eight or okay. the, uh, you know, the, Sometimes I'll, I, a big upset I usually take is like the 12 over the five. I okay. don't know why, but they're just like, you know, because it's like I'll have them going like one round. Yeah. And if I have that team losing anyway, it's like, well, I may as well take the gamble, try to get the points. Yeah. And if I have that team toast anyway. For sure. It's kind of my strategy, but. I mean, this is coming from the champion last year, so uh, that's right. It's pretty good. Uh, yeah, that's right. No, no but. it's coming off a big win. So, so yeah, we'll be we'll be putting together a March Madness pool, folks. So keep an eye out on our social channels for how to say, uh, sign up for that. It's going to be a lot of, you know, it's going to be really exciting. Actually, I think we're going to do a live when we pick our brackets, and yeah. we'll, you know, we'll do it uh, interactive with the fans and the followers, and and just see who they're feeling on all the matchups. Um, but uh, but Nate, that'll conclude quarter four, episode twenty one of season two. We'll yep. get into the fire wagon. And uh, and, dog and dog water. water of the week, you got yours on hand. You want me to get into it? I uh, yeah. I mean, I'm just re I'm re revamping back to what I took a few weeks ago. But I'm going fire wagon of the month for February. I'm going Patrick Line. Okay. I mean, we broke it down earlier. He's been an absolute buzzsaw warpath fire wagon beauty. Yeah. And uh, that was a lot of words, but uh, yeah, he's been on fire, and I'm going with him. Okay, my fire wagon is John Morant. We talked about it. The be the Bibbidi bobbidi at the beginning of the episode. John Moran has just been incredible. He's a high, human highlight reel right now in the yep. NBA. I mean, his poster over Podal. He's, uh, his, his second quarter halftime buzzer beater was maybe one of the best highlights I've seen in the NBA this season. He's really making a name for himself. So my fire wagon of the week name is uh, John Moran. I like that a lot. You know, I would revamp back to the MLB for my dog water of the month. I think it could fit. Um, but I'm going to go with my boy, Sungjae. Okay. You now he let me down. And that's all it is. It's personal here today, folks, on the dog water of the week. Um, I guess this one's going to be of the week. You know, I took him for my one and done. I expected big things from the guy and uh, nothing out of him. So, you know, I missed cut. So I'm going with Sung JM as my dog water of the week. And then I come right back and pick him to win this week. Let's go. I like it. I like it. And my dog water is just the entire MLB. 
Yep. Um, you know, obviously going to be missing games, going to be locked out. As fans, it really hurts. We're excited for MLB. Um, you know, Mr. Manfred's been an absolute clown lately. Um, and obviously not being able to get a deal done is uh, is unfortunate. So it's been a little dog water-esque for it me. It can't be so. that hard to do. No. Like. So. Anyway, folks, go follow us on all social platforms. Go follow us on TikTok, Instagram. Make sure you're giving us the five stars. Give us a comment. Um, subscribe to the podcast. We always appreciate you guys. See you later. Peace.